tapping into the subconscious may seem radically new to us, but in traditional societies it's commonplace. In many ancient cultures, shaman, medicine men and spiritual healers serve as guides. They use music, dance and rhythm to help alter their states of mind. To the drone of the didgeridoo, the native Australian shaman enters a trance. He moves between the material and the spirit worlds into the dream time. It's an inner world of visions where the ancestors live in sacred places. And to the Aborigines, it's as real as the world around them. The shaman will draw wisdom and healing power from the ancestral spirit shadows in the depths of the subconscious mind. Western science, with its technological view of the world, has largely dismissed this spiritual experience as primitive mumbo-jumbo. But recently there's been a revival of interest in the practices of ancient cultures. Now modern science is starting to take note. Okay, in a moment I'm going to ask you to put the earphones on. And, uh, Here at the University of Sussex in England, psychologist Dr. Brian Bates conducts an experiment. He knows that drums have a special role in unlocking the subconscious mind. So if you'd now like to put your earphones on, keep yourself calm. We're trying to bring into the, uh, into the scientific laboratory some of the best ideas, most exciting ways of, um, of liberating the imagination, really. And we've found that in uh, traditional societies, although they are less sophisticated than we are technologically, in some ways they're more sophisticated psychologically. So one of the techniques that they use for driving the imagination and for uh, generating powerful images in their rituals is with the use of rhythmic drumming. A drum beat is highly resonant, containing many different sound frequencies. These sounds enter the brain along different nerve pathways. So drums affect much larger areas of the brain than sounds of a single frequency. And if the rhythm is right, Brian believes it coaxes the brain waves into unusual patterns. Rhythms that give rise to images and visions. Perhaps this is why drums are so important in rituals all over the world. This is, is really rather like a, a cauldron of, uh, of images and being stirred by the, uh, by the rhythm. And images bubble to the surface and often surprise the people who are doing this quite simple but quite powerful technique for, um, for journeying psychologically. And I can feel the surges of power through my body and rage but a powerful rage through me and it was just um, a wonderful feeling going through this landscape that seemed to be so much underneath me and, and so a mystical landscape but and then I fell down back into the sand and the lizard creatures had also gone back into the sand and we buried through into the tunnel in the sand and went back into the sea when we compare the journeys that people have they have um, many idiosyncratic characteristics, but they also share quite deep um, images. And so we think that the drum beat, because of the way it um, reverberates in the brain, helps people to get at deep images, which don't normally play a part in our everyday life, but which are shared amongst all, all people of one culture and probably all people of the world. Some experiences of the subconscious seem almost universal, like the remarkable visions of those who come close to death. Many say they float along a tunnel towards a bright light, 
There's a singing in the ears or a rushing sound. Some interpret this as a passage to heaven, a communion with God. There's a great sense of warmth and happiness. So good, many feel reluctant to come back to the gray world of reality. Science says the near-death experience occurs when the brain is deprived of oxygen. It takes a few minutes to die. Even after the heart has stopped, the deep brain is still working. Is this the soul leaving the body? Or is the near-death experience merely the neural firings of a dying brain? We may never know in this life. But we have some intriguing clues. Pilots training for supersonic flight experience what is known as G-lock, gravity-induced loss of consciousness. Fighter pilots are subjected to rapid acceleration. Modern jet fighters can fly up to twice the speed of sound. But if the pilot maneuvers too suddenly, the intense gravitational force can stop the blood reaching the extremities of the brain, causing blackouts. But the deep brain goes on working, triggering unusual visions. Pilots report radiant bright lights and rich colors, beautiful surroundings, euphoria floating, and loved ones appearing to greet them. Many of these images are reported in near-death experiences. So similar, the cause could be the same. No departing soul, just oxygen deprivation, the brain shutting down. I guess I was sort of in a state of fear where I didn't want to turn around and look. A very friendly, welcoming feeling at one instance. I was starting to feel very anxious and very cold. The outlines of a human body, almost complete and total panic. Very visual experiences. Uh, one of the first ones... Here I at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, a team is investigating certain common perceptions of the inner mind. So we'll be taking a baseline recording first. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're looking at the electromagnetic brain patterns seen in people having the near-death experience. The research is led by Dr. Michael Persinger. Basically, at any given time, all experience is due to those portions of the brain that are most metabolically active. If we can simulate that by applying complex, meaningful magnetic fields to the brain, we can also induce those experiences. This experiment is testing the idea that mystical perceptions and paranormal experiences can be turned on at will, not by hypnosis or shamanic drumming, but by a scientist stimulating nerve activity in the brain. The volunteer sits blindfolded in a soundproof chamber. This sensory deprivation allows the mind to focus on electromagnetic patterns transmitted across the brain through this modified crash helmet. Uh, if you feel anything change with the electrodes... They're able to simulate the exact brain patterns that occur in near-death experiences. Is that comfortable? Dr. Persinger hopes the research will benefit psychotherapy. We tried to evoke the fragments that compose the near-death experience and other mystical experiences, such as detachment, feelings of moving through a tunnel, hearing voices, the sense of a presence, usually on the left side. Our major thrust is ultimately to apply this to dealing with things such as psychological depression. After a while, I remember feeling that there was someone else in the room with me, almost looking over my left shoulder. It was all I could do to not turn my head and want to look.
if you stimulate the deep portions of the temporal lobe, so you can get very, very vivid imagery, and the emotional commitment or the emotional sensation that something is profound, real, cosmically real, and personally significant. It's a male voice, but it's like really, really far away. As if you can just sort of like catch a tone you can't really hear. You can tell that it's someone talking. You can distinguish that, but you can't make out any kind of words or anything like that. What we've been doing recently is generating words as magnetic patterns. And even though the person isn't hearing it through their ears, their brain is interpreting it. So they're actually having fragments of experiences as if they're hearing it when in actual fact they cannot be. These experiences are so strong, they're utterly real for the person who has them. They can be as profound as a religious conversion, yet we can generate them with a machine. These mind games are beginning to shed their secrets. The scientist becomes the shaman. But where are the limits? What else can people be made to believe? But well, one thing that's really clear, you can control the person's experiences and they don't know they're being controlled. That's why this technology is a potentially powerful one and has a two-edge to its sword. As a tool of science, this technology may bring us valuable new understandings of the obscure depths of the human mind. But there's a dark side. In the wrong hands, could it become an instrument of power, a means of oppression? If we're not careful, will mind games one day become mind control? Next on TLC, how many ways could there be to send the dearly departed to the great beyond? Science Frontiers is deadly serious. Then, it's a peek into the secret life of the telephone. <laughs>